Beauty in the Deep, the fascinating beauty of the underwater world, where we explore the mystery of ancient fable. The fable of mermaids who live at Wikiwachi. Hello everybody, George Taylor from Imagine Nerding coming to you from beautiful Wikiwachi. But it's my first visit, took the drive out from Central Florida and this place is packed. They parked me in a uh, grass sandy lot and I'm walking past all these cars. <laughs> it's gonna be a busy day, but I'm assuming most people are here for the water park. Very excited, been in Florida for a few years and this has been on my bucket list. Finally excited to check it off and see this historic state park and tourist attraction. Let's dive into the history of Wikiwachi. Located in western Hernando County, Wikiwachi Springs State Park is about a two hour drive west from the Magic Kingdom and just over an hour north from Busch Gardens, Tampa. Although it is a state park today, it started out as a tourist attraction that was privately owned and operated for most of its more than 70 years. The name Wikiwachi means Little Spring or Winding River in the Seminole language. Like other springs in Florida, Wikiwachi is a source of clear and fresh water from the aquifer, and Florida Springs have been tourist attractions for more than a century. Wikiwachi itself is so deep that the bottom has never been discovered, and the water is at a constant 74 degrees. Newton Perry, who was a natural born swimmer, lived near Silver Springs as a child and would teach swimming in his teen years. He would also put on underwater exhibitions with his sisters, which were photographed and published in magazines to promote Silver Springs. Newt also convinced MGM to film two Tarzan films and Universal to film The Creature from the Black Lagoon in Silver Springs and Wakala Springs. After the success at Silver Springs, Newt scouted Wikiwachi as his next endeavor. The area was desolate and barren, and Newt had to remove old refrigerators and cars from the springs. He invented a way of breathing underwater with air hoses. Then, he built an 18-seat theater below the water surface for the shows. The theater opened on October 13, 1947. Years later, it was expanded to 50 seats due to the worldwide popularity of the mermaid shows. In 1959, ABC, the American Broadcasting Company, the same company that Disney purchased, ABC ended up buying Wikiwachi. ABC heavily promoted the shows and even built the larger 400-seat theater that exists today. The shows continued and in 1982, Wikiwachi opened the Buccaneer Bay Water Park. ABC did sell the park in 1984. Due to issues with the water district, the operator's lease was terminated and the state of Florida took over in 2008. I just finished the mermaid show, the Little Mermaid show inside the amphitheater that they have. That's the one of the main draws and attractions. And I have to admit that it was neat and interesting. Still processing the whole show not sure what I watched or what happened <laughs> and uh, hard to place the time period of it. But it was one of those, you know, original 1947 style attractions, not the show, but you know, the whole amphitheater. Now I'm on the Tranquility Trail, which runs along the riverbed, the area, just trying to kill some time before the next river adventure cruise and checking out some of the wildlife. Sadly, I didn't get to experience the Wilderness River Cruise. When I had approached the dock earlier, it was about 11.30 and it said the next boat was 1 p.m. This video, of course, is the closest I got to seeing the cruise. I noticed the dock had about 30 or 40 people waiting under shade. And when I asked one of the park rangers, they said the boat only holds about 25 people. I knew that if I didn't show up early enough for the one o'clock show standing out in the sun, I wouldn't get to experience it.
After experiencing the Tranquil Trail, I spent some time just walking around the remaining grounds. I didn't go into Buccaneer Bay because it was so packed and I wasn't going to the water park that day. But I left feeling a little bit disappointed in my visit. Sure, I picked a very busy day, weekend day to go, but I had wished that there had been more park staff available and more boats running on the river cruise so that I could have taken advantage of it. It really felt like it was a very small and tiny local water park that the residents took advantage of instead of driving the hour and a half to Disney's water parks. It was really great to see the grounds and to walk through this historic Florida attraction, similar to, you know, Cypress Gardens. You hear a lot about them, and it's nice to experience them firsthand. As I mentioned, I just would have liked for there to have been more to do, especially with a $13 admission price. And in mind paying that, it did help support the park, and I really enjoyed seeing the history of an early Florida attraction. Would I recommend visiting Wikiwachi? I'm not really sure. The Mermaid Show seemed very dated and very misogynistic, and even though they kept saying it was based on the Hans Christian Andersen tale, it really followed the Disney movie pretty closely. Except the songs were kind of weird, and I'm not sure about the message that was coming across. Overall, though, I enjoyed walking through the historic area and getting a greater sense for what it was like to visit Florida pre-Walt Disney World. So if you're in the area, I don't think it hurts to stop by and check it out. I would just avoid it uh, on weekends at any cost, especially on a hot, busy summer day. Have you ever visited Wikiwachi? Leave me a comment and let me know. I would love to hear from you. I'm George Taylor from Imagine Nerding, and I hope to see you in the parks.